Ribs and pranks were once a staple of pro wrestling culture, and while they're less common in modern times, there exist some legendary stories of wrestlers playing jokes on each other. Thank you to everybody here. These ribs were usually played backstage or on the road, but today we're focusing on the ones that you either got to see or witness the after effects of on screen as we highlight 10 hilarious pranks played on wrestlers. The mystique and serious nature of The Undertaker's character has seen countless wrestlers try and make the dead man break character. I know that you like hoes. Go somewhere for a little vacation. That right there will make you quit being so upset. You hear me? From trying to get Taker to do the spin a Rooney. <laughs> to The Rock creating the people's elbow in an attempt to make the phenom laugh. I believe the first time Rock did the people's elbow was in a match where we were trying to make Taker crack. I always thought that was the hokiest thing ever, but iconic, right? And always to get me to laugh. Yes, Undertaker's hatred of cucumbers has also left him open to some funny pranks. Cool as a cucumber. <laughs> yeah, I hate cucumbers. The Undertaker throw up all over a lava house because <laughs> there was a cucumber floating in his eyes too. But one of the best ribs played on Taker was executed by Kurt Angle. I love you, man. Stone Cold Steve Austin is a wrestler who loves a good rib. An example of a prank he played happened during a match versus Shawn Michaels at a live event from QA in May of 1996. Instead of his usual all black attire, Austin opted to wear neon pink wrist tape and armbands that he borrowed from Bret Hart. He put it over, he smiled a couple times, but Shawn's got that long hair, so he was able to uh, cover his uh, mannerisms up, but I popped him pretty good, but it was just a rib. It was a surreal look for Stone Cold, but that's why it made for such a funny rib, since Austin rocked the pink in order to try and make Michaels and referee Earl Hebner laugh. Ahmed Johnson was a foul-tempered wrestler who got a lot of heat during his time with the WWF due to his bad attitude and recklessness in the ring. You guys trying to kill me? I'm a gang member, baby! Remember that! Goldust, knowing Johnson was easy to rile up, decided to rib Ahmed during a segment where Goldust resuscitated Ahmed. After he'd been knocked out, Goldust was meant to put his hand over Johnson's mouth when administering CPR, but instead of kissing his own hand, Goldust lip-locked Ahmed for real. What's he doing? That's first aid! He's saving his life! Ahmed was scripted to then get angry and go on a rampage looking for Goldust. with Johnson attacking Bob Holly and a cameraman. Based on the incident that had just occurred, there was no doubt some real life frustration mixed in during Ahmed's tirade. Goldust kissed Johnson again during their match at King of the Ring 1998, angering Ahmed even further to the point where he began hitting Goldust for real. Ahmed was Ahmed. He thought it was gonna be funny to put his lips on my lips. <laughs> and I didn't think that was very funny. Hmm. So the last few moments when you see him not fighting back, there's a reason for that. But this wasn't the only incident where Goldus decided to get intimate with his opponent as he played a similar rib on The Undertaker. And I grabbed my hand like this and I put it right on his dick. <laughs> and I'm just rubbing right there and I'm making these faces all sexual-like and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? The Undertaker's gonna kill me after this. And he's looking for me, God damn it, he's cussing, he's throwing shit and Bruce had to calm him down and say, that was me, you know, I, I told Dustin to do that, That's, that was a rib. And Goldust, up to his typical tactics now, trying to humiliate The Undertaker. Mark Henry was another wrestler with a hot-headed temper that made him a target for pranks during his early days in WWF. Oh, 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 lady, you Henry would later learn how to better control himself as he grew wiser to the business, but there was always still a chance he could burst out if sent over the edge. And this is exactly what happened during an off-air segment on SmackDown in 2011. The world's strongest man was told he would be facing Sin Cara in a dark match after the show. Henry waited in the ring but soon became impatient since his opponent was nowhere to be seen. With no sign of Sin Cara, Tony Chimmel was told to get on the mic and thank the fans for coming. Meanwhile, Henry was still waiting in the ring, becoming more and more enraged. You got one more match left and you rest. 
Eventually, Mark returned to the backstage area to confront whoever was at the gorilla position. Only no one was there. Henry began destroying anything he could get his hands on, absolutely furious over the prank that had just been played on him. Vince McMahon and other key backstage personnel had orchestrated the rib so that they could beat the traffic while the fans were still in the building, seemingly awaiting the post-show dark match. Henry felt disrespected by the rib. It upset him so much that he attempted to hit the company, only for McMahon to talk him out of it. Obviously, you don't respect me. You, and you damn sure don't fear me, so we don't need to talk no more. Vince showed Henry the video of him destroying the backstage area, saying that if Mark could be this version of himself on television, it would be a guaranteed hit. This proved to be true as Henry began his Hall of Pain run, which ended up being the best work of his career. Oh my God! World's strongest slam! Come on, you're hurting me! You're hurting me! All of which came about thanks to an elaborate practical joke. Vince McMahon ribbing his wrestlers is a common theme of this list, since few could get away with playing a rib on TV other than the boss. Or better yet, a pay-per-view, as McMahon would fall edge ahead of his hair versus hair match against Kurt Angle at Judgment Day 2002. It was always intended for Angle to lose the match, since he was naturally balding. However, Vince coerced Angle into making Edge think he was the one that was going to be losing his hair instead. And he goes, Vince. My head's kind of fucked up. I have a bunch of bumps and stuff. I don't think I'm going to look good bald. And Vince said, too bad. You're getting your head shaved. Vince kept the ruse up until right before Angle and Edge went out for their match. Edge was relieved that he wouldn't be shaved bald, but the fact that he was told about the decision last minute meant that Edge didn't have time to figure out how to use the clippers, meaning Angle's scalp took quite a pasting during the haircut. <laughs> Next, we have a Vince rib that played out on television. It occurred on the December 21st Smackdown from 2010. Big Show came to the ring dressed as Santa, bearing gifts for the audience. Show got into the ring and went to sit down to read a Christmas story to the crowd. But as soon as Show sat in the seat, the chair collapsed, sending the world's largest athlete to the ground. One might think Show's weight forced the chair to crumble under the immense pressure. However, Vince ensured the chair was gimmicked ahead of time so that when Show went to sit in it, it would give way. Former WWE writer Freddie Prince Jr. revealed Vince's plan for this segment on the Wrestling with Freddie podcast. I think Show was going to sit in when he was going to read a Santa Claus story, was going to break when he sat in it. And I was just like, oh, Jesus. He's like, and you better not friggin' tell him. Like, what am I going to do? I told Big Show. And Big Show didn't care. He was like, I'll play it off. <laughs> Sean Waltman is notorious for his ribs on other wrestlers, including the time he crapped in Sable's bag and when he cut Michael Hayes' ponytail off during the plane ride from hell and then nailed it to the locker room door the next night. Waltman would be the victim of a famous rib where his eyebrows were shaved off by Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig. Waltman had to pose for promotional photos shortly after, one of which ended up being featured on the packaging of his action figure. Waltman continued to wrestle on television as the 123 kid while his eyebrows were still growing back, which made for quite a funny look. Yeah, look at this kid. This is a chance of a lifetime for me, but God, I'm just so nervous I can't even talk. Next, we have a rib where Sean Waltman was the one dishing out the dirt as Sonny was sleeping on the receiving end of two of the most disgusting ribs in wrestling history, all thanks to Sean, one of which was the time Waltman defecated in her food on a European tour. It's also widely believed that Waltman took a dump in another rib that involved Sonny. On an episode of WWF Superstars from the summer of 1996, Sonny would be cornered by the Godwins. Phineas proceeded to dunk a bucket of their signature slop over the head of Sonny. <laughs> The slop was usually a mix of different foods gathered together from catering. However, on this occasion, only half the slop came from catering, while the other half came from other wrestlers in the locker room. They donated to the slop with spit, pee, and supposedly feces, courtesy of Sean Waltman. I even had to pour a little bit out because I couldn't carry it to the ring. X-Pac and Razor and Dr. Tom had put some stuff in the bucket. I don't know exactly what it was. But. This was done as a way to get back at Sunny, who had heat with many of the boys throughout her time in the WWF due to her Jezebel-like behavior and personality. Waltman is also said to have once taken a dump in Mark Henry's Subway sandwich. However, it's not known for sure if Henry ate it or not, although some reports suggest that he did. We've got one more poop-related rib, although it backfired hilariously. Vince McMahon is a sucker for toilet humor, so this makes it even funnier that he was on the receiving end of a bathroom joke he instantly. Oh, he's wearing Mr. McMahon's bare ass hat with another belt! 
It went down right before Vince was set to go out for a promo segment on Raw. McMahon wanted to mess with Gerald Briscoe in the gorilla position. Vince did this by attempting to make Jerry puke by farting next to him, since Briscoe is known for having a weak stomach. Vince did the deed which left Briscoe dry heaving. <laughs> But there was a bit more than just gas that came out of McMahon's backside. Vince had shot it in his pants and there was no time to clean up the mess as he had to go out for his promo. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, I have to go to the Vince was forced to walk to the ring with a stain on his pants that the camera crew didn't dare shoot in fear of the consequences. After Jim Ross revealed this story on a podcast in 2014, he sharted. He's wearing khakis and he's got a brown stain. Nobody had the balls in the truck to shoot it. Vince responded on an episode of Raw by telling his announcers to take shots at JR on commentary. McMahon is no stranger to making fun of JR. Jim has continually been mocked and ridiculed on the air by Vince. Stone cold, stone cold, stone cold. <laughs> Most, if not all, of these jokes came across as more nasty than funny. I want to show you these photographs right now. JR, oh, I think, needs a tan. On. A little bit of rims to live by. You're going to love this one. But we'll highlight them as our last example, just to show you the lengths Vince has gone to to mock JR on television, such as when JR was made to kiss Vince's ass. Kiss his ass! Oh my gosh! Or the infamous Dr. Haney skit, which was one of the worst segments WWE has ever produced. It begs the question, why would Vince intentionally create bad television to make a joke that only he thinks is funny? It wasn't business and it wasn't funny. So why did we do it? And it made my wife cry, so it pissed me off. If it meant ridiculing JR, Vince had no qualms about airing it. Whoa. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out a similar video on the top 10 outrageous Vince McMahon moments. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.